Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jesus Conde and today we're going to be painting a fish. So let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to be doing here is the sketch, which I'm doing in pencil lately and paper. Um, I want to promote this kind of uh, work because I think uh, people is starting to think that the computer helps you to do the drawings where it's completely false so doing it this way also um, breaks your mind out of the computer and this gives you um, um, a better I think it calms you and gives you a better way of, of doing your drawings than the computer um, which is there's nothing bad with drawing the computer directly but I think this way really gets you a different result that definitely looks better or less digital um, so at the end your stuff is different so anyway um, I started using a, a, a really really um, <clears throat> light drawing first grabbing the pencil really far away and then going darker with the with the with the force that I use in my hand and the uh, and the kind of, um, of, of trace the liner that I, that I do then what I what I do is take a picture take a photo of the drawing uh, if you have a scanner um, that's the best way of course but doing a, a photo is not a bad idea if you don't have a scanner the only thing that you have to be aware of is that the lens of the camera change the drawing a bit so you have to stand um, far away from the drawing uh, try to take the picture as much as uh, perpendicular as you can from the paper and make zoom because if you don't make zoom the, the drawing could be could have some distortion of the lens of the camera so make zoom stand a bit um, far away and you'll get a good picture of your drawing so what I did here was um, making it um, darker with the um, hue and saturation controls that I will explain in a few seconds and then making a clipping mask I'm adding some color I'm not using any kind of, of blending modes I'm not using any kind of blending modes on the on the layer I'm just doing um, painting on top normally but keeping in mind that I have to keep some of the line art behind so I'm not uh, pushing all the all the pan into the tablet to get maximum opacity so doing this, um, you're starting to have like this kind of light uh, shading on the on, on your drawing. In this case, the, the fish, and you can start then. You can start then applying darker colors or shading a little bit more. But this is actually kind of like an approach that um, that you could do in a traditional painting. Some artists start with really light and then go dark with the shadows and all the, all the other values and colors but they can start really light so I'm trying to kind of uh, do the same workflow here and that's where I started this way um, so to explain this is what I had I had this uh, cutted fish from the paper um, is one layer and then what I'm going to do is go to image adjustments um, hue and saturation so when you go there, image adjustments, hue and saturation, you get this little window here and you can um, turn down the lightness to get it more gray. Uh, but you can do uh, different kind of stuff. You can adjust the saturation. Uh, here I don't have no color, so you can see. If I click colorize, I get some color here. So now I can explain. If I turn up the saturation or, or the hue, you can see how it changes the color or the quantity of color. Uh, but right now I need something gray, so I just dim down the the lightness to kind of like a more black, um, more grayish color value. So I create a new layer. You can create a new layer with Control Shift N, and then I'm going to do right click and create clipping mask. So right click, right click, create clipping mask. You have this symbol now. This little symbol uh, tells you that you have a clipping mask. So whatever you paint now is gonna stay inside of the 
of the silhouette that you had before. I'm not using any kind of uh, blending mode, I'm just painting light so you can keep the line art. So it's the, there's no uh, multiply, there's no add, there's anything. So I'm just painting really light on top, trying to keep some of the line art behind. For those um, person that um, thinks I'm using some kind of blending mode. So now what brush am I using? I'm using any normal uh, soft brush, let me explain. Uh, the normal brush like this will give you um, soft, um, uh, if you wanna, it's a soft brush, but if I open this uh, window with F5 on the keyboard, I press F5 to open this window, you can see I turned, uh, uh, turn on the other dynamics or the transfer in the new photoshops. Um, that it doesn't have, that this one, this option doesn't has, do, doesn't have it the normal brush. So right now I click <coughs> on the pen pressure because it's a, if I use fade, I'm gonna have to put a number of in how much time or how much distance I want the fade to to work. But if I click on pen pressure, um, I'm gonna get the the control with how much uh, pressure I put on the pen when I'm using the tablet. So. Remember transfer or order dynamics and then pen pressure. So now what I'm going to do is work on the eye of this little um, fish, fish, and later I'm going to explain you what to do and what not to do. Uh, right now, as you can see, I'm applying a dark color on top and then a dark color below because of the shape of the of the eye. Here I got a dark color directly from from the some of, some of the line art of the drawing using the eyedropper. The eyedropper you can use it with the eye on the keyboard. And here I'm starting to make some some highlights. Normally I do this at the end, but I was really uncomfortable with the idea of not get of not getting this fish skin right. So I started right away because I wanted to test that I could do it. <clears throat> so I started to work on the head, which is was which was my, my my biggest concern. And I think it turned out really well. So later I want to explain to you a little bit more, but right now you can see the process, the approach I'm, I'm using here. Um, <clears throat> using a soft brush to create some some highlight uh, really soft and then I'm going to go for a really uh, defined really little uh, kind of highlight the mouth was a different material as I could see in the reference and here in some parts are using the R which is the the blur tool or the smudge tool and you can see here I'm putting a little bit of highlights uh, in some parts. The highlight is not constant. It's not. Um, it's not just one block of light as a lot of people do does when they are starting to work on digital, which I'm going to explain later what you should do and what sh you shouldn't do. I explained that in other videos, but I'm going to explain it again for some people that haven't watched the others. <clears throat> And basically, here I'm filling some parts with with lighter colors to give a sense of reflections. I'm also trying to fix some stuff on the on the drawing that I didn't get right at the beginning. And I want you to see how I do the the highlights in here. Some parts are more bright than others. Some parts are more um, thin. Some parts are more are wider. Stuff like that. <clears throat> Here I'm using a blue uh, coming from one side to give some kind of a reflection sense. Okay, so here I have two two fish heads. I'm going to explain the the brush that I'm using right now, which is a circle brush, a normal circle brush. The um, just pressing a five, you can open this window, and in brush tip shape, you click here in brush tip shape, and you can change the roundness vertically. And now you get my brush. This is the brush I use. Oh, the other thing that has is the shape dynamics is on and is on pen pressure. So you can change the size by the pressure that you use on your pen. So this is the brush I use all the time. 
since like one year and a half I've been using this brush and I think it's the best brush that I've used in my life anyway this is what you shouldn't do and this is gonna be what you should do so um, I'm going to <clears throat> start with a dark color here there we go okay and I'm going to do the same thing on both I'm just going to copy that later I started with dark because the light is coming from the top and this part is kind of like a um, is going in um, and then you have like a transparent part going out of the of the eye so I'm going to explain that a little bit more later but <clears throat> This is more like a cavity. This is going in, like um, like the inside of a sphere. So the light will be below because it's coming from the top, and it should give you that sensation right away when you are painting it that the light is coming from the top, and this is kind of like a hole. Uh, not the black part of the eye. The black part of the eye should be lit from the top, but it's because that is kind of like a ball. It's kind of like a sphere. And then, <clears throat> let's copy this to have it here. And what we want to do is I'm going to make a um, specular or a highlight how a beginner person will do it, which is wrong. And honestly, yeah, you don't know how to do it. I'm going to tell you how you should do it. So they, sh they do something like this, this one big round um, highlight when they should be doing something like this it could be tiny you should be using low uh, maybe 20% opacity and do little variations uh, around and in other parts because this is not 100% perfect okay and the light that is coming is not 100% perfect um, it could it could be more like in the beginner's uh, version I painted, of course. Uh, there, I'm not saying it doesn't have to be that way, but in order to look more believable, more detailed, more realistic, I think this is the um, right approach. And because in otherwise this one looks cartoony. In in the skin of the fish. And it's mostly, you know what, it's mostly not because they, in part it's because they don't have, they don't know how to do it, but I believe that is because they don't want to take the time, you know, they don't want to take time to, to paint it right. Um, so you need to observe uh, what's really going on with the light and the materials. I think I went too far here <laughs> with the brightness. I'm going to fix this a little in one, a few seconds. Um, so exactly someone that is starting to use digital uh, and it doesn't know too much about um, what it's doing is going to make something that looks kind of like that and um, you should start really soft with uh, another color the, the most colors you use I'm not going I'm not talking about a rainbow here but the most colors you use are better and there should be harmony on these colors. I'm using some blue and then you can use a maybe blue with a little bit of green or something like that. I'm not saying you should go blue and then the highlight is red, for example. But I think you, you kind of understand what I mean. Uh, you can use a blue color and then a slightly blue color with a little bit of other thing, maybe with a little bit of green and lighter. So right now I'm using a lighter, but a little bit more of um, aquamarine blue. And I'm going to use a hard brush to get the real um, bright highlights. And I want you to notice that I started with one, then the other one is like a line. And then here is really... Because it, the surface is not like this, it's not perfect. It's more like uh, something like that. It's half bumps and, and downs. It pops out, stuff like that. And it should be... Some parts are brighter than others. Some, part, some parts the light hit the most, some part doesn't hit too much, 
you got reflection like that is coming from below so we want to have to put a little bit in here and all these highlights should be looking towards the camera when you feel like there is a part of the surface that is not looking directly to the camera you shouldn't be doing highlight there because the highlights are the specular is actually a reflection of the light to, to towards you and that's where the light hits and your eye is also looking at that part I'm not too sure how to explain it but it's, the light is perpendicular to you in there so anyway this is kind of how it should be painted let me dim down a little bit here because it's too much bright and there you go something like this it is more proper I will say <clears throat> So we have the dark color coming from coming from dark to light down here because it's the shape. Then the eye is kind of like a like going out. It's like a um, half as a sphere. And then you have this little transparent thing going on on top of all that, and the bright is coming uh, right there. The light is coming from the top. So we have brights here. We have brights here. But the one inside shouldn't be uh, white, it should be more like a saturated color. Alright? Should be more kind of like something like this. And notice that I grab another color completely different, but at the end, this is what gives you richness on your painting. And it looks way better. So I hope this was helpful to you in how to do the highlights in the eyes and the skin of the fish so now I just added some um, occlusion maybe um, call it that way kind of like a shadow and then erase where I didn't want the shadow same I'm going to do with the reflections here I'm just going to erase where I don't want it in the back of the of the, I don't know how to call that actually <clears throat> but you guys understand and here what I'm doing is just um, this fish material I'm trying to erase where the shadows are going to be okay so I had to do a little research really quick so I have the flakes these are called flakes and what I did was, was erase where I didn't want to where you want to the shape to be more formed and here, by accident, I I took um, one of the colors with the eyedropper and I started to paint the flakes on top, like little, just little dots with the with the brush I had. Uh, this is a brush that I've been using. And what happened is that I got this really cool sense of reflection. I think it looked uh, accurate. Look, it looked good. So I just keep working with that and. I think it looked great at the end. So I started to do it everywhere. I just took the color here and I started to paint that. Same with a little bit of shadow and some some parts I just did points with the with the brush. And other parts I just did a little shape of the of the flakes. But the shape of the flakes should be really uh, um, random. It should be too perfect because when you do it too perfect, it looks cartoony doesn't look believable and right now what I'm doing is just start to give me more detail uh, more highlights where you need to have highlights um, kind of like um, making some changes in, in how the color um, is applied uh, cleaning so mostly like everything at the same time <clears throat> at some point you have kind of like your ingredients it's like when you're cooking, you finish put all the ingredients. Now you have to wait for the for the food to be ready for eating. So now all your your, your ingredients are here. Now you have to work with that. You have you have to start uh, doing more detail here. So here I'm using the Dutch tool, which is the letter O, and I'm going to start applying um, detail on the on the more important parts with the highlights. I'm just adding highlights. I here I'm 
turn down a bit the opacity of the layer using the letter and using the numbers but to change the opacity of the layer using the numbers you have to you get to have the H um, key on instead of having the B because if you have the B for the brush what ha what's going to happen when you when you use the numbers is you want to change the opacity of the brush not the layer and <clears throat> yeah from now on it's just that um, trying to make sure that your image looks exactly like you, like you want it to be uh, is basically just hours but I wouldn't like you to work too much time on one painting I mean once you got something that is decent I will say you should stop there um, in, in just if you're doing something like this for practice if you're doing something um, that you want to really take on this huge painting like let's say 10,000 pixels or something yes you can you can take weeks painting that but this is a small painting uh, it's actually better that you get a, some decent point and then maybe do it again maybe do another of the same one uh, maybe another kind of fish um, and you could get more practice that way um, because when you start applying so much detail on, on just one painting what's going to happen is that it's going to look stiff your painting is going to look lifeless like it doesn't really have the same feeling when you started doing it it doesn't look um, appealing at all um, and that's something that happens when you put too much detail on the paintings um, unless it's a really pro artist uh, that it actually knows where to apply detail and where not to apply detail you could kind of rescue that um, dynamic of the painting but anyway this is it I really hope you like this tutorial uh, remember you can download the PSD and the full video on the Patreon page which is what I'm going to talk in a few seconds Okay, so now we are here on the on the Patreon page. As you can see, I put some uh, all the tutorials that I do. I put the PSDs and an extra video. This video is uh, sometimes a bit long, um, sometimes it's not too long. Um, and the PSD with the PSD, what you can do is you can use the same line art that I did. You can you can compare your results with my results. And I'm also uploading these, these things um, for a project that I'm doing right now, it's called Velocity. And I'm going to be doing that, I'm going to be showing my Patreons all the Velocity stuff that I'm doing. I, I don't say I'm going to show to other people, but here I will show something that is more like private, more uh, secret. And they can see it right away when I, when I upload it. Anyway, it's just two dollars per month, and you can get about three to four PSDs every um, every month. So I think it's okay. And if you want something else, here is the the skin tutorial, which is something I did few few months ago, kind of like a year ago, year ago almost. And it's basically a recipe. It's basically a recipe to paint skin. Here are some liners for you to practice. Uh, you can compare your results with mine and some textures that I did. The thing is a step-by-step -step tutorial to how to paint this kind of detail skin. And if you follow it, you should be able to do the same thing that I did here. I'm not saying it's super easy, but I'm telling you it's kind of like a, a recipe to make you understand all the ingredients that you need for creating a skin like this. So I really hope you like this tutorial and you can help me in this um, painting a skin um, material using Gumroad if you want to get it or using the, the Patreon to get the PSDs to support me. Well, thank you very much. I really hope you like it. See you next week.